Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Zach Reimers. I'm the Policy and Advocacy Lead at Volunteer in Queensland. Um, I want to welcome you all here today to our Future of Student Volunteering panel discussion. So to start things off, I'd like to start with our official acknowledgement of country. We would like to acknowledge. We would like to acknowledge. We would like to acknowledge. We would like to acknowledge the original inhabitants and their descendants. On which beautiful country we are all gathered today. May we pay our respects to this land. Its waterways, the sky, oceans, and mountains. And to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who have worked upon and cared for this land. For, for thousands, 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 for thousands, for thousands of years. From the islands in the north, the deserts in the west, and the rainforest in the east. We recognize the diversity of land, waters, culture, and language, and celebrate the different environments that have sustained life. For all that have lived and continue to live in its beauty. We pay our respects to our elders past and present, and thank them for their connection to community, and for the songs, dances, lessons, and stories that have been shared with us so that we can continue to share and, and pass them down, down to future generations. We extend our respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today and to the broader Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and express our gratitude for their contributions to our ongoing violence and resilience. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. We're coming together as a nation with all the volunteering state peak bodies, volunteers, volunteer involving organizations and tertiary education institutions to celebrate student volunteering as part of National Student Volunteering Week. So I'm very excited to introduce our panel today. We're going to hear from those on our panel and then we're going to have a Q&A to finish things off at the end. So if any thoughts or questions come up, please put them into the chat. Please um, enter them in using the, the chat there in the Q&A feature. If you see someone with a National Student Volunteer Week background, they are a staff member or a panelist, and um, they will be taking your questions and maybe fielding them at the end as well. Um, so at the end, we'll have the Q&A. And today we are joined by Sam Johnson, who's the founder and CEO of uh, Student Volunteer Army or SVA. Beck Miller, who's the head of SEEK volunteer, and also uh, Joseph Setchka Rojas, who's a student volunteer at University of Western Australia and volunteer events coordinator for the UWA Guild volunteering team. Uh, Joseph is completing a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, Politics and Economics, a PPE, completing double masters in international relations and international law. His volunteering experience has been broad. So being involved in dance classes as a kid, he assisted older adults in mastering ballroom dancing. Uh, and in 2020, he's the inaugural elected president of UWA's Undergraduate Philosoph uh, Philosophy Society, which is a club organized by students. Good example of volunteer effort on the ground. So since 2021, he's been an events volunteer coordinator bringing students together, especially following the initial peak of the coronavirus pandemic. So Joseph was uh, a volunteering committee council member in 2021 at UWA Guild, and this year has taken on the events volunteering coordinator head role, as well as um, helping international students return to campus. So from a student perspective, Joseph has found volunteering invaluable to his understanding of community, developing his skills, and let's, let's hear it himself from Joseph. So welcome, Joseph. Um, could I just ask you to say hi to those in the room while I bring up your slides on the screen here? Hello, guys. Thank you very much. And it's such a, a privilege you know, to have the chance to speak on, on such an event like this. Uh, I remember last year being involved uh, with uh, National Student Volunteer Week 
and it's so great to see how the time passes by and you know volunteering continues no matter what like uh, the university semester might finish but the volunteering never stops and just to see what what's happening in the community amazing thank you so much it's great to have you here and we're, we're chatting about student volunteering so um let's go through and and just to kick things off could you just uh, talk a little bit about yourself here all right so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a first generation Australian. I was born here, uh, but my mother's from Chile and my dad's from Germany. Um, this, is, this means that I quite enjoy areas like to do with food and stuff. Really enjoy trying different uh, food from different places. Uh, the way I got into volunteering, I think uh, that already somewhat covered beforehand. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there is a part of it which has been accidental where I've got into, into volunteering and there's another part where I've started doing and I've developed a, a real joy in helping the people around in, in be, having the opportunity to be in, in the community uh, and so forth. So, yeah. Amazing. Did you want to give us a little bit of background about UWA for someone who's not familiar with UWA and Guild and the student volunteers are involved there, what actually happens? Um, so basically the, the Guild is the representative for the students of the university. And as part of the Guild, they have a bunch of departments, one of which is Guild volunteering. Uh, but my understanding is uh, this is very unique in that uh, we have a collaboration with Volunteering WA, uh, which has been really, really great. Uh, and yeah, um, so this collaboration has enabled a lot of the students, as it says in the, in, in the, on the slides, to connect students to the community and uh, to give students the chance to find volunteering areas they're interested in or expose them to the bunch of uh, social impact and not-for-profit clubs that happen around Perth, that happen within Western Australia. Uh, so yeah, so I reckon it's really a good opportunity to help students get out there, you know, and get volunteering. <laughs> Amazing. And and why did why did you want to be involved in particular? Um, so in 2020, I was involved mainly with clubs, which is not necessarily volunteering as the way how we would perhaps formally see it, but there is a lot of time spent that isn't paid, but it's mostly internal engagement, so working with students and so forth. And during that time, I spent a lot of time running events that were online. Uh, so I really enjoyed having like similar, perhaps not as official, but similar as this, having like discussion panels and so forth with students sharing their ideas. And when it came to the end of, you know, there's a predominant amount of lockdown sessions, especially in Western Australia, um, I really wanted to help out to go as a team with students out into the community. So in that way, this, this was an extension of my already experience within, you know, having a team and discussing something to actually getting something that's more practical in, in the community. So, yeah. You touched on the COVID uh, pandemic there. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what it was like in that lockdown period and, and the needing to sort of rebuild? Um, yeah, so with the lockdown i think one of the biggest things that happened was uncertainty so not just for us for events trying to do excursions so forth but also a lot of the not profits and social impact had to rethink how are they going to do volunteering and so forth so the beginning of 2021 i spent a lot of time just getting out reaching out to a lot of uh uh, not profits learning a lot about the different organizations around in the community um and yeah it, uh, at the end we managed to get like a lot of them we've actually managed to do uh volunteering with some of them have responded that you know because of circumstances they can't do the volunteering anymore uh one of the volunteering excursions that we've done uh it took one and a half years before we could actually do an excursion with that uh, not for profit, but that was one of the things of you know being patient, uh, being kind, having empathy, realizing 
that especially in this area of volunteering and like social impact, time is such a valuable resource. You know, uh, people are really busy, uh, students are really busy, not for profits are really busy. So being able to share that space, I think is really good. Yeah, I mean, more important than ever, right? And um, something you mentioned there is, is the students getting involved in making that impact. Did you want to just touch on as well what you've seen among your peers? Like, what are the motivations that you think appeal to student volunteers in a broad sense? Oh, that is such a big question mm. uh, because I feel like usually there will be so many different uh, motivations that students would have. So, uh, for some people, it may be altruistic reasons. Uh, sometimes people, especially with international students coming back, there'll be a, a need for like teamwork and, and friendship within those volunteering groups. Um, others will be searching for like uh, skills within volunteering. And the last one is a realistic underpinning when you look at uh, volunteering and it's important to say work in careers in the future. Um, it may not be the case that all the volunteering will relate specifically to the role that you're looking for in the future. But what it does show is that like you have good time management, uh, you, you care, which is something that I think is pretty important. And that, yeah, you're able to manage your time so that yes, you're studying, you're really busy, you're working as well, um, but you're also volunteering uh, on the side as well. That uh, may look good to an employer. Absolutely. And I think that's something uh, Beck is going to touch on in, in her segment later on as well. Um, so let's, let's talk about some of the campaigns. So we've got Dismantle, and we've got one other. Could you just tell us a little bit about what happened here and, and what impact it made? All right. So one thing for events is, is uh, as an events coordinator, our scope is really, really broad. Um, so we can volunteer with a whole lot of different excursions. Usually our sessions are one-off and then afterwards we can refer them on to the organization or do another excursion as well. But it's very uh, accessible in a sense. It's pretty open to people coming and going. Uh, Dismantle was one of the programs I've been uh, working with. Some of the great staff from, from that organization uh, because it's kind of a different volunteering compared to what we're usually doing. Um, I, I can't sum of this, summarize this very well as you know, someone who isn't from Dismantle, but from the impressions I've got from them, uh, they do a bunch of programs with youth in, in Western Australia. Uh, one of their programs being bike rescue in which you get bikes and you pull them apart and separate the good parts from the bad parts. And the good parts of the bike go on to uh, mentors and uh, working with young people. And they work together for, uh, you know, uh, social skills and so forth and preparing for the workforce. They also have a bunch of other programs and they do uh, sometimes assist youth in the, in the justice system as well. Uh, they have programs out in rural areas, some of our youth, youth centers like Banksy Hill. Um, so yeah, just trying to get people out of the justice system and, and see uh, how, how uh, the, the youth can be re rehabilitated considering the circumstances and the context, which would be very specific to the area. Amazing. So it's definitely not just about bikes then. There's a lot more no, going on there. Not. Fantastic. Uh, we, yeah. And we just, have, we, we just have about one minute. So we just got a very brief time. If you could tell us, uh, a quick description of, of this event here. All right, so I, I think that question mentioned from early on is I'm really a fan of like uh, parrots and birds. It's something that I've really enjoyed. And this excursion was with a wildlife rehabilitation, rehabilitation center. And yeah, it, to me, it's been a, like, you see the pictures there were having fun, but also most of the volunteering was like gardening and so forth, helping out with all the aviaries because it's a big job, you know, when you have a whole lot of wildlife animals coming in at un unsuspected times, unsuspected hours. So, yeah, but it was really fun. These ones here all are somewhat tame and unfortunately can't go back in the wild. But there were a lot of them where we were there, we were swapping branches, but like we were, were not to interact with them too much and so forth. 
So the hope is that they can go back and help in the populations in the regional area. Yeah. Great. So already just between these two, we can see a bit of variety in terms of what's happening and, and there's uh, it's like the impact you're making on the world. So I think that's a good thing to tap into the different motivations. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I'm just going to turn off those slides there. And thank you. so, yeah, no, thank you. And so next we have Beck Miller. Very fortunate to be joined by Beck Miller today. She's been the head of SEEK volunteer for five years. So Beck has a diverse background working in sports, local council, in ASX listed companies. And Beck's really passionate about helping uh, the sort of tapping into the business world, but also having a positive social impact and finding the sort of marriage between the two. So through Beck's role at SEEK volunteer, she's really motivated by the valuable role that volunteers play in the community and the mutual benefits that individuals get from volunteering. So welcome back. Could I ask you to introduce yourself? Say yeah, hi. well, I think you've done a pretty good oh, job. But yeah, you. I um, I see myself as, I guess, the current custodian of Seek Volunteer. I've been in this role for five years, but Seek Volunteer has actually been around uh, for 22 years, which um, is a pretty long time considering the internet only really kind of was like the early 90s um, and Seek Volunteers was started in, in the year 2000. So um, we are fully funded by Seek uh, and hopefully many of you have used us, um, fingers crossed. So we work very much like the Seek Jobs Board, which is we try to connect people to volunteer opportunities across Australia uh, and formal volunteer opportunities through a not-for-profit. And we re recently just started accepting um, certified social enterprises to advertise on Seek Volunteer as well. So you can volunteer with social enterprises. So one of the things just um, touching on what Joseph just said then is from a motivations perspective, um, we know from some of our research from users coming to Seek Volunteer online is that 40% of people are coming and looking to volunteer to have a social impact. 40% are actually looking to volunteer to progress their career and 20% of people are looking for some sort of um, social connection. It might be a connection with a community and a sense of community or with people. And so last year we took it upon ourselves to do a little bit of research and fingers crossed my share screen um, works. Can you guys see, oops, see this? That's just slow reveal. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Full screen. Great. <laughs> Fabulous. So um, you'll see there that um, uh, as I mentioned, that second dot point, not sure what that red squiggly line is doing. 40% of our applications come from people wanting to use volunteering to progress their career. We also know um, from the perspective of being, you know, an online recruitment portal that we do skew towards younger people um, and about 50% of our applications and come from under 40 year olds. So actually 70% of our applications now come from under 45s. So um, quite skewed towards the, the, the younger generation. And in 2015, we did this one little piece of uh, research. We managed to get a question in some of SIG's broader research that told us that, and it was in New Zealand, Zealand that we did this, that 94% of hiring managers agreed that volunteering is a great way to gain experience um, that can be used when you're job hunting. It was a little bit of like, that's great, but so what? Let's let's dig a little bit deeper into that. So last year we um, invested in some research and we did 12 in-depth interviews with hiring managers. And we also surveyed 450 hiring managers across Australia and New Zealand to find out a little bit more. So what we wanted to find out was we wanted to look and really examine the value that they put on volunteering what exactly do they value and how can this actually help um, a candidate or someone that's looking to um, get a job stand out in the hiring process? Because, you know, as you we all know, they can skim read resumes, all sorts of things. So how do you really use that volunteering to experience to to, to stand out. So what the aim for us was, was to provide some useful insights to three groups, hiring managers, uh, which seek, given our mothership, we can access to influence them to try to get them to value volunteer experience more, to volunteer <laughs> to volunteer managers, how can we actually talk to volunteer managers about how to um, scope and, and talk about your volunteer opportunities when you're talking to people who want to use volunteering to progress your career, and then volunteers slash job seekers. Um, so I have done this presentation before with about 30 slides. 
today I'm doing it in about 10 minutes with two slides, um, but I will be able to point you to a portal that has um, a few really easy to read content pieces that has all of the research um, outcomes in it. But in a nutshell today, I just wanted to keep, talk to three key things. So the first thing we know is that there is a key selection criteria that hiring managers look for and volunteering work plays really, really well into that. So they're looking for cultural fit. So they're really looking at, um, you know, what sort of fit you are for the company. They're looking at your professional capabilities. They don't really care whether that comes from paid work or unpaid work. And the same with your soft skills. Like, do you have the ability to learn and really grow in that role? So cultural fit from a volunteering experience. Look, and you guys, I'm sure all know this, but really it looks at, you know, if you volunteered, it talks to your values, um, talks to your ability to be able to commit and, and be a really good team player depending on the nature of the volunteer opportunity um, and says a lot about, you know, your desire to help others. From a, a soft skills perspective, you know, do you, it really shows that you've had the ability to work in a structured environment if you've done some formal volunteering with a not-for-profit. Um, you may have engaged with some people, communication skills, um, and you've been able to take some level of instruction. Um, but really they're looking at that, as I said, not in an informal environment, but more in a formal environment. And then from a professional capabilities perspective, skilled volunteering is the, is the king here. Um, they will, they do look at volunteering second to any paid work experience, but it's a clear second above everything else. Um, so they do see it as a really good way to get skills and experience. Um, but the key is number two, relevance. So you can't just whack any old volunteer experience um, on your resume and hope it's going to work. So they, one thing that we talk about is looking at the role, the type of role you want in your career. And when we talk about career, you might be a student who's starting your career. You might be a student who's looking to change careers. Um, you also just might be someone in the workplace that's separate to student volunteer work that's just looking to progress your career. So three things we say that you can look at and consider when you're choosing a volunteer um, role is the type of role that you want to get and how the volunteer experience can actually give you experience for the role. The nature of the company and the size of the company. And as I said, volunteering in a company that has similar structure or, or nature to the companies that you think you're going to apply for or industry. Um, and the big one for us at the moment uh, in the volunteer sector has been aged care. You know, there are some industries that really lean themselves into volunteer experience being a really great stepping stone. Um, and certainly the experience would be valued, you know, really highly up there with paid work experience. So really think about the relevance. Um, and the other thing is the time commitment. So you can't just go in and say, I did this for half a day. It's probably not going to cut it. So we kind of look at ideally it's between two and three month commitment how many hours over those two and three months is going to vary but to show some level of commitment to an organization where you have you know helped them and got skills and experience in return is probably around about that period and we talk to volunteer managers about that as well in the way that you know they scope their opportunities because hopefully you know you've got that job and you've moved on in that two to three month phase and you might need a break because you're starting your new new role so things sort of work in that two or three month phase when you're job hunting um, and then the last one really is how you communicate your volunteer experience sometimes can be actually more important than the actual type of volunteering you did. So really take the time to think about um, what you got out of it, why you decided to do it in the first place. Like what was that real motivation for you? And again, as I said, that commitment of how long that you actually did it for. So there's two places, obviously, when you're looking to, um, to job hunt that you pop this. One is on your resume and the second is in an interview. So the first thing on your resume that was really clear from hiring managers is um, paid work experience, you know, is still going to be, should be listed first on your resume and volunteer experience sort of second to that. Um, and re But really describe what you got out of it in terms of the skills that you had that you used and the skills that you were able to build in that volunteer experience. Um, and then, you know, you can practice your interviews and there's, you know, there's the usual sort of five or six questions that you'll always get in an interview. Um, and an interview is a really great time. They will not care whether it was paid work experience or unpaid volunteer experience in that job interview. So if you can use your examples there, it's a really, really um, great time. So what we've done on Seek Volunteer, uh, 
is um, on our, uh, this is our New Zealand site, but on our homepage, we have uh, in our footer, um, we actually have a link to this page. It's You can download the actual research report and then we have a couple of really easy to read content pieces there um, that you can read and get a little bit more detail than what I've shared with you today. Um, so that's really it for me, probably a bit shorter than maybe 10 minutes, which might be a little bit helpful, yeah. Pretty, pretty close to bang on actually, wow. so fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and just as you mentioned, look, there's there's a, a lot that we can talk about there. That's a topic we can get into for a long, long time. And as you mentioned, there's a full report and study done on this as well. So uh, we're going to be sharing out in a, a wrap up email, the ways that people can access that information that you've sent out there so they can learn more and also how they could find out more about seek uh, volunteer in general and, and reach out if they have something they want to ask or, or some sort of partnership that they're looking for. But yeah, I really, I really love that idea of um, people putting their volunteer experiences more in their applications because even that can lead to broader recognition of volunteering effort. And if applicants start doing it, even if it's an organization that hasn't started taking that into account, they would have to start to notice, oh, look at all this volunteering that happens out there. And anything that recognizes volunteering is good by us, basically. So thank you so much, Beck. Um, we, uh, we do have that Q&A at the end. And I can see that there was one or two questions that started going to the chat. Now's a great time to put some in if, if Joseph's uh, content or what Beck said has made you start to think about some things that you're wondering or questions come up, please put it in there because um, after our next speaker, Sam, that's when we'll be throwing over to you and the questions you put in. So thank you so much, Beck. So next we have Sam. Uh, Beck and I have met online before and me and Joseph, but Sam, I've actually had the uh, good fortune of meeting him in person, which is good. It's rare these days in these COVID times. Um, so Sam has, is uh, from New Zealand and his cow papa or work is using the collective power of, of people, volunteers to overcome these other barriers we experience, including the sort of bureaucracy, uh, shifting our belief around what we can achieve and what is possible. So Sam is the chief executive of SVA, Student Volunteer Army. He was the Young New Zealander of the Year. And he's also been, uh, uh, through SVA, has been awarded the Impact for Good Award for work that they've done during the pandemic. So Sam, can you give us an update on what's been going on in your world? Uh, thanks very much, um, uh, Zach, and uh, kia ora koutou katoa, and just an acknowledgement to um, uh, traditional owners of the lands wherever we are. Uh, I have the huge privilege of being in Melbourne. I arrived today from New Zealand, and I'm here for the EduTech conference this week, so it's such a privilege to be in your uh, incredible country um, for the week, uh, and a real pleasure to join this. So thank you to the team uh, at Volunteering Queensland um, for the invitation. Um, and can I particularly acknowledge uh, Ruth from um, Volunteering Tasmania, who's here, who we work very closely with, or with the Volunteering Tassie team, um, just to just, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what we do <coughs> with them. Um, anyway, the, my thoughts on the on, you know, future of, of, of student volunteering, and I thought I, that's the, the topic, and I thought I'd focus on some of the work we're doing at home and what we've learned about that. And I'm so pleased I'm talking after Rebecca, because I think Seek Volunteer uh, for many years, and they have, and they continue to pave the way um, with some really interesting research on, on volunteering links into employability. And that's a big part of what we do. So if I just share my screen now, um, if I can figure it out, um, I thought I'd talk particularly about um, our work with uh, uh, our SVA clubs, which um, are, is our work at university level uh, in New Zealand, which over the last uh, um, uh, two years, we've expanded that from having one university club uh, to having six. And it very much builds on the kaupapa or the work that Joseph talked about, um, which is around the principle of self-organizing. So what Student Volunteer Army does at both of our levels, we at secondary school, which is our service award, and at tertiary level, which is the clubs, it's the principles of, of supporting students to self-organize projects in a safe context that identifies them as volunteering and get the, gets them um, into a volunteering uh, project with an organization or by themselves to make something happen. Uh, and I guess our whole, our whole position and, and where we see ourselves in the volunteer pipeline um, is that step before they're even necessarily uh, applying for a job. It's about them understanding that actually, oh, I understand what a volunteer is. 
I understand what volunteering is, and I and I self-identify as one of those um, those people. Um, but just before we kick off uh, that, the quick background of, of my journey and story is that um, I was a university student after the Christchurch earthquakes. Um, and I thought to myself at the time when um, our civil defense or the, the SES basically said uh, to stay home, uh, but I was like, well, definitely myself and 12 friends knew we wanted to help out. There's a whole lot of silt. We knew we could help. We started a Facebook page um, and, and helped out. And we turned that into a charity and, and basically organized volunteering projects um, in different models at primary, secondary and tertiary college. And I guess what we've seen in the last 10 years over New Zealand, and particularly the last three years where we've actually really doubled down and focused on, on our model, um, and COVID's helped with that, and we, we got some good funding through COVID that enabled us to invest in our technology um, to actually make the models work, was really focused on how we can use volunteering as a tool to change a young person's traje trajectory, um, uh, and, and linking that service with education. Um, in New Zealand, we, we focus a lot about improving that equity piece, so particularly focused on young home carers and those who manaki or care for others. How do we actually understand the amount of service that they do? And in a Māori culture in New Zealand, it's, a, it's an incredible amount of service. It's not actually called volunteering. It's more what we call mahi aroha, so service of, service of love. But we, we count it. We say it is actually volunteering. It is something you're doing above and beyond what others do. Um, and, and actually there should be recognition or some sort of, you know, there should be a benefit for that person in that, uh, in terms of their career to support with their equity work um, and reduce the pressure on, on, on teachers and eventually fill people into the volunteer pipeline. Uh, and this year we're really excited um, to be piloting the program for the first time, our, our secondary school program with 10 schools in Tasmania and employment hubs, um, 10 schools a year for three years. And it's been a real privilege just to look at how we can um, work with Australian um, schools on that in, in Tassie. And just think about this challenge of linking service with education, with careers, and getting people to understand early that if you are a volunteer, great, make sure the experience is good. And then that will help sort of turn the pipeline around on, on the stats that come out every year saying young people aren't volunteering. And I guess what our experience in New Zealand is, is that they actually are volunteering. And we know that as people who are volunteer leaders, but they're volunteering in different ways. And that's your expertise, not necessarily mine. So what we focus on is getting students um, across, uh, we've got about 40%, 45% of the secondary schools in New Zealand in the program, and students go on and log their volunteering hours and they just record it. We wanna know any sort of service. If you help someone else anytime, generally outside of your home, uh, write it down and reflect back on it. And as they go through that, uh, they get badges for it. They get, if they do five hours, um, it's a pretty sort of basic tree planting or something like that, or beach clean up and then, and then move up to the next level, which is something every week during the school term and then a big step up to the 250. They get these badges that celebrate that volunteering in a school context um, and the teacher kind of runs it. And basically it pushes all that onto a, a service summary to help as a CV to get them in, into work and actually to help them understand it. And just as, as I said earlier, articulate those skills that we will learn from volunteering um, and really try and try and use that, that work um, to help with scholarship applications for TAFE for scholars, blah, blah, blah. blah. So what we've seen, and I just zoomed over that because of the time, but what we've seen is, I guess, what students do and contribute to the sustainable development goals. So in New Zealand last year, um, the numbers down the side there are the number of hours that, that, that have been actioned towards the different goals. And they record the goals. And even though the SDGs are not particularly well known in either of our countries, um, they, that when you force people to actually have to choose a category, they do quite a good job of doing it. And, and actually, the ones that came out the top were good health and well-being, a lot of tennis coaching or sort of sport coaching or um, other sort of support, and a lot of education-based based mentoring is what we found that they did. Um, and then more and more, the, the questions we get across New Zealand are from students wanting support on how to self-organise. So we talk very much about them finding a project. So find something that you care about, reach out to organizations to get their help, build a team and a plan, make that project happen. Um, and hey, here's some infrastructure that can help you, that, that, that can help you do it, which is, which is fun. But I guess for the future of um, volunteering the discussion topic today, it's about how do we as volunteer organizations and volunteer leaders provide that right, um, that right service and structure and support 
to such a diverse group of people who want to do totally different projects in, in totally different ways perhaps than they than they've done um, in the past. Um, so for us, the things that have worked really well um, at home in the last three years, particularly, is really celebrating that, 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 that volunteering in a hyper local context. Um, it's making it a national or statewide kind of thing so that there's a real celebration that, that's recognized by someone else um, and really linking it um, to, to uh, um, the employability and then giving the, the tools, particularly at the, the, sec, at the tertiary level, to self-organize and as, as was said in the first presentation. I'm amazed in New Zealand at the six different university clubs on six different campuses, how utterly different every single one of them is. They do completely different projects with completely different models, but the fundamental design principle under it, which has been the same for years, is your group of people helping others. So we just get to say, get together with people who are not your best friends, but people who are different from you and make a project happen that's not in your backyard and you learn something and you'll actually make a bit of a difference with it. And some amazing projects are coming out of it. So finally, just a, a huge invitation. Um, we'd love to work with any of you. We'd love to sort of learn from you. Um, we'd love to see what we can do. Um, and and, and uh, it's, yeah, um, you know, it's in Melbourne this week, let me know. And uh, um, we're really excited and, and as for a long time worked with our Australian colleagues, um, but we're just super excited about, I guess, what, what can be done in this space of student volunteering. And I think collectively, just as Volunteering Queensland's done by taking the reins of this, this event, just putting a massive spotlight on student volunteering. It often can fall uh, by the wayside, but it's, a, it's just such a huge opportunity, I think, for our countries. So thank you, Zach. No, absolutely. Thank you, Sam. Um, and I, I think one of the themes that you touched on there sounds like a common experience between at least Australia and New Zealand, if not other parts of the world, where we can often get focused on trying to create new volunteering activity. And that is very, very helpful. But one of the other things we should focus on is asking people to recognize, celebrate and describe what's already there and what they're already doing. And it sounds like through this, uh, through the SVA program where you're logging your volunteer commitments and your volunteer experiences to receive that, that certificate and that recognition, you're kind of asking people to do both. Think about what could I do? And in fact, what am I already doing that? And mm. uh, how can I reflect on the goodwill that I'm achieving there? Mm. No, that's right. We, we, we literally asked them, sorry, it probably wasn't a question, but we literally <laughs> in a school assembly in New Zealand at the moment, we would say, uh, you know, who, who's a volunteer and how mm. and hardly anyone puts their hand up. But when you really force them to say, come on, you've, you've all helped someone else in the last month. And it's kind of reverse psychology of getting them to appreciate that actually they, they do do something to help someone else. So let's count that self-identify as a volunteer and journey them in towards volunteering. Absolutely. We do exactly the same thing. And, and <laughs> other peaks in the room may do the same thing. Ask people at the start of a session, who's a volunteer? Ask people at the end of a session, who's a volunteer? The number of hands going up has doubled. And not just because people are doing this. Uh, people will realize, oh, actually, that was volunteering. I've had someone describe to me, I didn't put my hand up for saying that I, I did some volunteering because when I did the volunteering, I had a really good time. So I thought maybe that doesn't count. Absolutely, it counts. We're hoping you have a good time every time. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for that information. We do have questions coming in the chat. I encourage you to keep on chucking them in. Um, thank you so much for those that have done so already. And the first one we have up, um, it could be good maybe for uh, Joseph first and then maybe for Beck to touch on. So this is a question from uh, Chachisa and it's, how do I manage my volunteer work with my PhD journey? So I think more broadly, we're talking about, you know, students are doing so much already. They have complicated schedules where their commitments go up and down. And we know that one of the main barriers for people doing more volunteering is their lack of free time that they have. So Joseph, could we maybe start with you as a student and a volunteer? How do you manage to um, maintain that balance there? Yeah, oh, yeah, time, time management always seems to be the sort of question with this. Um, I guess if you are doing a PhD, perhaps the biggest thing would, would, be, would be trying to find volunteering that uh, is a bit more flexible uh, in relation to your, your, your PhD. Um, I have uh, worked on making my volunteering time, even though 
usually, you know, I'm with a group of students and still, you know, checking that no one, that everyone's okay and stuff. I still take that as my, uh, you know, downtime. So I guess even even if you're doing a PhD, it's very important, you know, uh, to have some time time off. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, it, it's very tricky, and I think it depends uh, from person to person. I personally uh, have a bit of an obsession with uh, scheduling. So when I'm procrastinating, I tend to schedule, which is probably a good thing because then when there's a lot of things on, I can manage to balance between study and uh, volunteering. But yeah, unfortunately, it's very context dependent. So mm. that's probably all the advice and really give Rebecca might have something uh, valuable to add to that. For sure. It, hey, if if what you do when you're procrastinating is you set up your schedule, then then I'm very jealous. <laughs> um, and Beck, did you have any thoughts on this one? I know you talked about you know, uh, the sort of minimum commitment that people might want to have to represent a real experience or a skill. Did you have any other thoughts about time more broadly? Oh, look, I actually think it comes down to passion and relevance. Um, and you might have some false starts, but what I've found, and I guess I'm actually more speaking from personal experience than, than as head of seat volunteer, but is that if you can find the right opportunity that you're passionate about, um, and whether that's from a social impact perspective or because you know you're gaining the skills that can help you in your career, it, it won't feel like extra time. You'll feel like, you know, you're ticking two boxes at once or something like that. And if I think of um, during uh, COVID for the last two years, I was president of a not-for-profit uh, here in Melbourne. And I would say on top of homeschooling two kids and doing SIG volunteer, I was probably doing 10 hours a week uh, and was deep in financial analysis to try to get this organisation through COVID. Um, I would never have thought I had, you know, 10 to 15 hours in my week. But for me, the financial side and learning from that, um, deep, deep, deep in numbers, which is something that I don't need to do in my daily job and have it in my career, was really, really beneficial. Um, I have finished that and now I am the uh, coach of the grade one basketball team at the local primary school. Um, and that's two hours a week and that's suiting me now. And I'm very passionate about improving those little boys and their basketball skills. So I think it just comes down to finding something that you're really passionate about um, and you'll, you'll find that you can, you can fit it in um, and fit in the right amount of hours for that. And as I said, you might have some false starts and that's actually okay. I know many organisations would prefer that you tried um, and they know life gets in the way and not everyone works out. So um, so make sure that you, you give it a go um, rather than sit there and wonder how you're going to fit it in. Absolutely. I think, yeah, that's, that's great advice. Better to give it a go and then to uh, find out how, you know, whether there's any challenges it raises with your schedule than to avoid the topic entirely and to not take it on from fear because you could be missing out on one of the best experiences of your life and something that really enhances your PhD, your work, your studies, and just your engagement with the community. Um, fantastic. And hopefully next time we have you on Beck, you'll have a basketball trophy there to show us, to celebrate. It's my background. <laughs> um, we have a question from Carly from Save the Children. And so this one might throw to Sam. So it's, it's about the differences between the sort of traditional model of volunteering and what students or younger people might be looking for. And, and just to preface the question as well, Carly mentions there's a narrative that young people are less likely to volunteer, which Sam, you mentioned that's often said in the sort of official stats. Um, but the challenge is probably more that volunteer involving organizations struggle to adapt or appeal or to incorporate a style of volunteering that really suits younger people. Um, I, I can say from my experience, as a volunteer coordinator in the arts, my key demographic volunteering with me were 18 to 25 and they were extremely reliable. And I think that's because we made a specific effort to listen to them and to appeal to what they're telling us they want from the experience rather than going in with a set model. Um, in terms of SVA, what do, you, what do you think about the model used to try and engage younger people and students, I should say? Uh, yeah, th thanks. Uh, I mean, we, we focus a lot on um, 
individual, I mean, one-off volunteer activities and then try and um, attract groups of people. We know particular, this is really New Zealand context only, and, and but um, a lot of the young people want to volunteer in a group with their friends. So we really target groups of people and try and get them to come to an event uh, and then journey those people, those who are most interested to be more regular volunteers and help siphon them into an organization to then work more regularly with them um, and, and, and con continue to support them. Uh, so that's that, that's 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 kind of our approach it's nothing particularly revolutionary um it is just it's you know it's a marketing game we we expect people to um, volunteer for less time than perhaps they used to uh, except for those who um uh, are really keen beans but we we want to give we you know in, in in doing um i guess su volunteer supply labor to, to some organizations we do with meals on wheels with the red cross for instance um we just we, we, we spend a lot, we spend money on advertising. We, we get a lot of people signing up through it. We put them through the process and we just expect a lot of people to go through and stay for a shorter period of time. And we hope that that increases, that time period increases, but we understand they'll probably move on as well. Um, so we focus on filling that funnel as much as we can. And we really try and fill it in a disaster or a crisis. I mean, that's when people love to sign up and they get all excited. And then of course their motivation melts away uh, within a couple of days. And then we text them and, and ring them and, and just try and encourage them to come and do something else. Um, and that we, we, and we have mild success with that. Yeah, so the way that I think about what you're saying there is like whatever opportunity presents itself, seize the opportunity and that kind of gets your foot in the door. And mm -hmm. then you've got a window to, to try and capture that volunteering or to demonstrate the value of being involved. and. So sort of getting them and keeping them is almost two sides of the picture there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, had, we had a consultant help us recently and, and sort of customer life cycle journey, the whole the whole process out from, from enticing them and attracting them and keeping them and loving them and, you know, blah, 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 really stepping it right through. And it, it, it pretty tripled the length of our, our user journey as such. Mm. Um, and, and then we really got to understand it more. And I think that's, that goes through for us um, when we try and attract a volunteer at a university level for a start to then get them on a committee to then be self-organizing projects for others and then going on to be a volunteer and organization. That's the pipeline and the funnel that we're, we're focused on. Um, and we haven't got it right yet, but I think we're, when we're trying to head in the right direction and gosh, between this room, the, the amount of knowledge that there is to help actually really understand that to, to solve some of the prickly issues that we have in this region. Um, volunteering can play a huge role and, I, and, and certainly in New Zealand we are not yet understanding from a policy level or government level the opportunities that volunteering can give and that's why they, there's no more investment in volunteering which hasn't been any for a long long time so there's big opportunities here if we understand it properly and can articulate it more clearly. Mm. And I should say from the Queensland experience as well we launched some um, research uh, about a year ago called the State of Volunteering in Queensland Report and in that we saw that uh, organizations said, oh, volunteers more and more are asking for flexible rosters mm -hmm. and flexible ways, intermittent ways to volunteer. And then we also asked them, do you offer flexible rosters? And uh, the vast majority said, no, no, we don't, but we noticed that they want them. So we have a, a clear defined gap there that um, we can sort of appeal mm -hmm. to those people who need those flexibility, um, which is often students in this case. Awesome, fantastic. Um, and actually, I should say as well, I guess that's why the, the SVA, one part of what you're doing, the sort of self-service model, um, if when you're self-reporting your acts of volunteering, that can incorporate into really any schedule because you're finding the time around what you're doing. So I guess we're, we've we got to listen to the volunteers and we've got to appeal in both models. People are going to want some structure and people are going to want some flexibility and how we actually do that. Um, is going to be a challenge for each volunteer involving organization, but a challenge worth uh, tackling because it's an investment in the future. Um, we have a question from Ali here and um, about tapping into business to help volunteering. And I thought this could be a good one where we throw to Beck. Beck, do, could you maybe talk about uh, either volunteers or volunteer involving organizations forming those partnerships or, or on the other side in the business world, like the employee volunteering. And how can we, does any of that connect to students? Does any of that relate to students? 
I get uh, if, if I sort of take the question in two parts, perhaps. So, you know, most, a lot of the big companies now will offer some form of employee volunteer leave. Um, and, you know, a lot of the larger not-for-profits will have an existing kind of corporate volunteer program where they've worked out how to um, tap into that leave, um, which is, you know, a, a bit of a frustrating um, problem sometimes for the not-for-profits in that, you know, an organisation will ring and say, I've got 25 people and I want them to come between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. and I want them to get all these great team bonding things out of it. And they're like, well, actually, we're here, to, you know, we, we need you to have a social impact while you're here. So um, some companies are doing that really, really well. Um, uh, and I guess, you know, in the, con I'm just trying to uh, get the question in the context of student volunteering, Zach, was there more information there? So maybe have you noticed among businesses any yeah. desire that if a, a motivated group of student volunteers wanted to achieve something that they'd be open to talking yeah. about? Oh, absolutely. Um, and more and more. So, you know, the team days that I mentioned can be quite structured. Um, and I know I've just um, had a conversation um, for the a division at Seek with Headspace um, and said to them, how about we scope out this half day strategy session where we can come in with 10 of us and, and I won't go into the detail of the idea. But as long as your, you know, your contribution, again, can be relevant and helpful to that organisation, um, I have always found most organisations really, really open to a conversation, but it's about scoping out what that contribution can be really early and really easily and efficiently. So um, if you can get together a bunch of your friends um, from university, know exactly what skills that you have to offer um, and, you know, know and have some connections to, you know, a couple of not-for-profits, absolutely pick up the phone and give them a call. Um, but again, try and be, be considerate of their time um, and hopefully have a bit of a lead on a problem that they're trying to solve that you think you can help them solve. Yeah. So kind of, making sure that you can clearly articulate why this is a, a mutual win, why it's a win-win situation for all involved, what they're getting out of it, what you're getting out of it. Because yeah, as you identified so many um, of these uh, corporate groups these days e explicitly say that they have a social responsibility and they want to be able to act on those values as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, a couple of examples, I know a marketing team, there's a not-for-profit in Melbourne called the Nappy Collective, and yeah. they run a really good program, but they didn't have any marketing money. So the brief to the marketing team that went in for this half day or full day strategy session was to come up with a marketing plan that required no investment. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, so, and they did. And that was a social media. It was all, you know, it was great. And so you can, with the right brains of the right expertise, get really, really creative. Um, so that was super helpful for them, something that would have cost them a lot of money if they got an agency in to do it. And the agency would have no doubt told them, you know, you have to invest money. But they managed to do that all through volunteering. And there's no reason why that can't be a bunch of students doing that. And worst thing that happens is you send them an email, you don't get a reply. Or you reach out to them and they say, sorry, we can't do that. That's, that's probably the worst case. Awesome. I, I, Zach, oh, I had a good example yeah, of jump that. in, please. I had a good, good example of that during COVID. So we, we were a disaster response organization, right, known for doing shovels and wheelbarrow type work. And COVID happened. And I thought, well, what, what the heck are we going to do? And, I, and, I, and then supermarkets were over, overwhelmed. And I literally picked up the phone and tried to hassle um, the, the Swalworths in New Zealand and, and the New Zealand-owned company called Foodstuffs. Um, and I hassled foodstuffs uh, about three phone calls. I got, got told an absolute go away from the first person. We're too busy. Second person said, oh, what, what, what do you actually want? Blah, blah, blah. I said, we want to build an online supermarket for you. You're, you're the your largest chain of supermarkets in New Zealand. You haven't got a supermarket, online supermarket in, in half the country. Can we do it quickly? And anyway, the guy kind of rolled over and said, yes. And, and then we did it. But it took utter perseverance just to, just to fight through and actually be be with the idea and then try and do it. And we didn't ask for anything, um, but we just actually backed ourselves. We had a really good group of people with great technology, great team. We had, we, and, and just, um, you've got to be quite forceful, I think, with those some of those ideas when you can see that volunteers can make a difference. Um, and our filter for it is when usual service delivery is overwhelmed, we look to step in and, and solve the problem. And I think corporate volunteers have a, have a unique um, value there as to volunteering organizations we can we can surge quite easily we can see when things are going uh, a bit wrong and and you can offer some support to help absolutely and, and 
that sounds like a fantastic initiative. We saw examples of that here in Australia, specifically Queensland as well, with food delivery and, and parcels and that sort of thing. And it has to start somewhere, right? And in your case, yeah. it started with, with a no, and then it, that no became a yes, um, because you're able to yeah, keep persevering and, and explain the worth. Um, fantastic. We are coming right up to the end of the session. In fact, this, this is time. We do have more questions pending that I see have come in. Thank you so much to everyone's put them in. We are going to send up a wrap-up email post-event. We will do our best to um, put in the resources and links that might answer a couple of those questions there. I saw one that just came in, for example, was how could I find a volunteer role? Um, I think it said in, in Wollongong. So uh, we'll, we'll certainly link to some resources on how to find a volunteer role. One key example would be your state and territory volunteering peak, a local volunteer resource center or a SEEK volunteer. And in fact, we uh, use the same database in our backend to, to share the volunteer roles wherever we can. Um, so thank you so much for, for joining us today. As you can tell, we could keep on talking about this for hours yet to come. And I, I wanna keep this going, keep these conversations going during this week. It's National Student Volunteer Week. It's not over, today's only Tuesday, it keeps going to the end of the week. I can reflect on my time as a student and that really is the time where you can be really motivated, pitch in, and you're, you're often discovering what you wanna do or dipping your toe in the water with something else. And you can discover something that ends up changing the course of the rest of your life, your career, your community, your passion, your studies. Um, so thank you so much to those who have tuned in and shared their stories in the chat as well. And thank you, of course, to our panelists, Joseph, Beck, Sam, thank you for joining us. Uh, this session's been recorded and uh, we'll be have access to the recording in the next couple of days. Keep an eye out for all the opportunities coming up this week. If you're doing a National Student Volunteer Week activity in your area, definitely let us know about it. Um, and thank you so much for being involved. And thank you to all the student volunteers out there making all of this possible. So have a great day, everyone. Happy National Student Volunteer Week. Thanks guys, well done Zach, cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.